It's my pleasure to be here in Los Angeles with Byron Katie, who is a famous book author, speaker, and has helped a tremendous number of people transform their lives uh, over uh, a large, how many years? Over 24, about, well, about 25 years. Um, and uh, we will be talking about her system called The Work of the Inquiry Process and Turnaround uh, and how that works and why is it called The Work. And uh, if time permits, about some other interesting things like uh, motorcycles, inner peace, and uh, going on the road. So, Kelly, thank you again for taking the time to talk. You're welcome. So, I want to ask you first about about the work. You know, for those of, of, of who are watching or may, may not be familiar with it, uh, if you can describe it. And uh, I think one of the key uh, ingredients to me knowing about it. Is that it is called the work. Well, I didn't know what else to call it, call it and um, and it was my work. So people wanted to know what had transformed my life so radically, and it was my work. And we have okay, so, so the work is a way to identify and question the thoughts that we're all thinking the thoughts that are the cause of all the suffering and violence in the world and the work is four questions and turnarounds meaning opposites of the concept or assumption that we're questioning can we find examples for those turnarounds and for people more interested um, the text for the work is loving what is and of course they can find that anywhere and um, it's um, a gentle process of inquiry. It runs very deep, very thorough. It doesn't take a teacher. Mm. Um, it's very user-friendly. And um, my experience is that no human being has more wisdom than another. And as we experience these questions that I call the work, these four questions, it it's like the door, the key that taps into that intelligence that we all, that wisdom that we all hold. So, so this is my question. How can you be, on one hand, not attached to things, not attached to the way things are, not attached to, to any self-importance, you know, no, not attached to any of those things, well, but, <laughs> but, I'm sorry, but, but be full of love as well? Because it seems, it seems contradictory. Well, the way you're, the way you're um, interpreting it, I would, I would absolutely agree with you. In, in my world, people don't attach to things. They attach to what they're believing mm -hmm. and then reach out for things. It's like think, feel, act, have. And, and when we no longer believe that having that thing is um, the cause of, not having that thing is the cause of our unhappiness, and we're questioning what we're believing, then we're happy and we can still have that thing. Yes. But we're attached to what we're believing, not things. And as long as we take, think we're attached to things, then we're really lost. And we really climb over each other to get that thing. And a competition arises. And that's so against our nature. If we were of right minds, if you needed something, I would give it to you. If I needed something, you would give it to me. There's right. a balance going on that we're missing because we're competing and competition comes out of a, a frightened mind, one that doesn't understand that in this moment, now right under our noses and experience, that everything we need in this moment we have. But more, 